me out for some reason, mm. came charging towards me, jumped on the fence, and if that fence hadn't been there, it'd be dead. Oh. Wolves of Adelaide, Beer Fire Studios, Dublin City Rounders, let's go. Like a camel in the great Victorian desert In the wrong place at the right time Having fun down at the waterhole Walked into a shot from a 305 Wolf came at me like a bad decision Picked me right out of the crowd I'll never forget that predatory precision Mother Wolf would have been very proud it's not the only option I've considered But there is no other way I walk alone by the dirty old river Like the wolves of Adelaide Like leaves in a bonfire Washed by an old summer leaping rainstorm Covering up an old tractor tire We were up there in your lonely tower Singing songs together deep in the night With those rare and beautiful cactus flowers Underneath the disappearing tail playing lights Go easy on the medication Don't let the passion fade I dream we ran free across the vast Russian steppe With the wolves of Adelaide Physical implications You wind up in a metaphorical Afghanistan Like empires before you You better jump like nobody else can I only left because I had to I couldn't stand a pandemic in that place I saw a flood of great proportions I was lost without a trace not the only option I've considered, but there is no other way. I walk alone by the dirty old river, like the wolves of Adelaide. It's not the only option I've considered, but there really is no other way. I walk alone by the dirty old river, like the wolves of Adelaide. I walk along by the dirty old river Like the wolves of Adelaide Yeah, Mick, a uh, journalist, um, world trekking troubadour, uh, Australian rock legend, author. House painter. House painter. House painter. House painter. Have yeah. I forgotten anything else? No, no, no. Author's good. Author's good. Journalist's good. Yeah. Musician, songwriter, great songwriter, um, and obviously someone that we've known personally for, for many, many years, yeah. but I haven't seen you in about 20 years, you know, um, 18, 20 years or something. Uh, yeah, I think I was about... 
eight or nine last time. Yeah, last time yeah, 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 yeah. No, but a great inspiration as well. It's funny, you know, ourselves and Dad would always be talking about Mick Daly, and uh, mm. we even um, coin. You see the kind of shirt you're wearing? We yeah. actually call that a Mick Daly shirt. <laughs> yeah. So every now and then you'd be in the shops, you know, and you go, oh, that's a cool Mick Daly shirt. You know, I'll grab that. <laughs> I keep getting given them. What, really? Like, really? Like, wow. like friends of mine uh, who, who sort of have been in, in the beers or whatever, and yeah. they, they sort of, uh, they, you know, they've got mortgages and families. I, I, I can't perform anymore. You have these, and they give me these beautiful shirts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, my yeah. wife doesn't let me wear this anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They have to hang up their cool shirts, <laughs> you know. Start wearing high vis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, or things that they don't care if, like, kid spew gets on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, you're here in in Dublin at the moment, and you've been jetting around. Well, yeah, I was quite jetting. <laughs> Ireland, it's all the jet around, isn't it? But you've been getting your way around Ireland, uh, doing lots of gigs all across the country. Um, what's uh, what have been some of the highlights so far? Well, uh, it's it's all about pub gigs, obviously, and, yeah. and small bars, and uh, trying to fit into Irish culture. So you know, um, playing my own songs. But also some Irish stuff, yeah. And because that is the culture, and you've got to be a part of that, and you've got yeah. to kind of uh, fold yourself into it. Yep. Mm-hmm. So wearing that, a big green leprechaun hat and things like yeah, that. Yeah, not quite that far. <laughs> it's not like playing K Sound in Australia. I was thinking about this. It's not. Yeah. I was thinking, is this like playing K Sound in Australia? But it's not, because it's a far more. It's a far more ancient culture, and it's yeah. got. Mm-hmm. It's a. It's a. It's a genuine folk culture that mm-hmm. derives from. You know, war and famine and yeah, um, yeah. oppression, and um, to try and you know, you, and, and besides which, you're just not going to get the gigs if you're not doing that stuff. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I've been really enjoying that, and so some of the pubs, you know, a lot of the pubs are, are a kind of um, they get a lot of people through, and so they're not going to they're not knocked out that there's some Australian there. Yeah, yeah. But they they have, they listen and they like it. They seem to like it, you know, yeah. and. Um, so that's really enjoyable for me, just to be accepted, mm, yeah. and and to be to be playing in an environment where you know a true troubadour environment. You have to you have to uh, satisfy these people. You win them over. That yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that you are a genuine part of, of a tradition and yeah. a culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's a great thing to do too. To 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 be to be to realise that you are a part of a culture, even though you were blowing from Australia. But we have so much in common because yeah. all yeah. my ancestors all came from Ireland. I was going to say yeah yeah. 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 And 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 a lot of the Irish songs are about convicts or, yep. or movements going and, and, to, and the need to, to yeah. Australia or, or the USA. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, there's a real connection there, and it's it's part of the whole thing is to sort of be a part of that connection. Well, that's it as well. I, I mean, this is the thing. You know, they call it you know the ballads, the Irish ballads, and and essentially, you know, a lot of the songs you write, the original material is is very story driven, and it's it's always got a very kind of central theme that has a you know. You know, quite quite specific kind of context or moment in time or you know yeah. a, a subject, and and so the continuation of that tradition and and that thing of you know winning people over. Here's here's the old ballads and here's some new ones. You know, is, yeah. is really cool. And we saw it. You know, we did. We came down to the gig in Mother Riley's in in Rathmines, and um, and uh, you, it was a great reaction there. Yeah, people really respond to it. You see, like, you know, people actually putting their drinks down and listening and mm. paying yeah. attention to it, which. You know, it's it's a skill, and, and not everyone has that skill to be able to walk into somewhere where no one knows you and yeah, yeah, and actually to, engage to them. You know? Yeah, and and so a couple of the songs, um, because we joined you on stage at uh at the Bison Bar as well mm. for a couple of songs, and um, it's two or two of the songs that are part of this program, part of the podcast, um, Walls of Adelaide, and is it called Honey? Bringing the Honey. Bringing the Honey Heart. Right. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit the backstory behind those two tunes? Okay. Bringing the Honey Home, uh, I used to be um, part of a group called the Lonely Horse Band, mm-hmm. which was uh, me and two other fellas. Um, they both came from Burke originally. They lived in other places. But, Birkenback Boys. Uh, uh, yeah, Birkenback Boys. And Andrew Harlan and Tonchi, um, Tonchi McIntosh. And anyway, we used to go to remote communities uh, such as Nimiji in this case, which is in the geographical centre of New South Wales, mm. uh, pre- pretty much old towns that had been big in the 1800s mostly, yeah, right. like often mining towns, yeah, yeah, yeah. but also big pastoral towns uh, like uh, Grawan, which is up in the, gold, in the in the in the opal fields up north, and White Cliffs. Mm. Anyway, and we'd go to these towns, and we we'd just be there for a few weeks or a couple of weeks, living in the town and. 
talking to locals and going to the pub and just hanging out and yep. letting it all soak in. And then we'd we'd sort of sit down and write write an album, and mm. then we record it there in situ, mm. so somewhere in an old house or an old shack of some description. And on this trip, I had um, spoke. I was at the I can't remember where I met. I ran into him at the pub, maybe I can't remember. And um, this guy was an apiarist. Yep. And he, uh, he was in his family, and they just go around the country tending their bees mm -hmm. all over the place in the, in the whole Mallee area. But um, he was just a really happy guy. Yeah, yeah. He was just a genuinely happy, content guy. Mm -hmm. And it really struck me mm -hmm. how uh, content he was and how he just loved being in the bush. Mm -hmm. And that song just was one of those songs that just came out of, of nowhere and are pretty much, the lyrics are pretty much... Uh, uh, a recollection of the conversations. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the other one, Bulls of Adelaide. Well, uh, during lockdown, one morning, um, I just had, was playing a bit of guitar and this song just came out. It was like it just dropped into my lap. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a, a memory from when I was a child in uh, Adelaide at the zoo mm. and uh, walking towards the wolf's cage and this gigantic wolf just detaches itself from the and comes charging at me mm -hmm. at the fence there's other people around the thing but he peeked me out for some mm -hmm. reason came charging towards me jumped on the fence and if that fence hadn't been there I'd be dead oh, wow. and that obviously traumatised me in some way <laughs> or it stuck with me because it's on this day that came back with full force and I yeah, just wow. went and the whole song just emerged wow wow wow, wow and wow. um lyric, riffs and all and that was great because I hadn't written a song for a while yeah it always feels good doesn't it yeah isn't that that fear and it, you get it obviously we'll, we'll talk about the uh, the writing as well the um, the fiction and that 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 sensation when you haven't written something for a little while you think is that it is that the, is that yeah. the last one yeah, yeah and it's such a great relief when you do get a creative burst like that so yeah. so you're, you're writing as well so you 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 know, I remember even when uh, when you in uh, in Lismore, you were working. What was it for the Northern Star or one of the papers yeah, there or Northern something? Star, right? Yeah, Northern Star. Yeah, And you were working with a paper in the nineties in in the UK. TNT magazine. Yeah, yeah. It was and what was the main job there? Oh well, uh, I was a very lucky man in those mm -hmm. days. I, I had a, the best job in the world. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I was a travel journalist. You're an apiarist. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I was mainly a travel journalist. Yeah. Uh, TNT was a backpackers magazine and, and it, yeah. it was about that thick yeah, yeah. and it had all the information that backpackers from all over the world could need to yeah, survive yeah. in London and Europe and cool. the cheap places to live and the cheap pubs and the good you know gigs to see and Lonely Planet kind of vibe kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah and and, and um, it was a great place to work for a really fun place and I'd just get I could just go wherever I wanted basically and write stories about it yeah wow and, um, and where did that take you? Oh, all over Europe yeah great all over Europe um, yeah, I, I think the only country I didn't go to was Greece. Right, okay. Or well, a couple of others, obviously, but yeah, the, the one I really wanted to go to was Greece. I never got there. Yeah, but, yeah. But yeah. also I'm trying to hint to the to the editor. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Greece would be a really good yeah. place for me to go. But also like uh, music, I, I, whatever gig I wanted to go to, mm. uh, ring up and, and just say I'm from TNT with magic word because it was a very yeah, it was well, a very influential yeah, yeah, in well, those days. And that brought you to Ireland in the nineties. Yeah, I came to Ireland for, funnily enough, for a wedding. The yeah. um, Irish girls that worked at our local, nice. and one of them invited to a sister's wedding. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty wild. <laughs> and another time, and earlier on, me and a mate had been here during the troubles, and mm. we'd seen some, we saw some quite dramatic action in those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was that in the in the Republic, or was it up north? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah, up north, uh, around Belfast, yeah. and Armagh. Yeah, yeah. No, I remember um, Dad as well. In the early nineties. They had a couple of gigs up there and getting getting stopped and uh, fucking dudes with guns coming on the bloody uh, on the bus and checking everyone yeah. out and all that kind of stuff, crazy stuff, you know. Yeah. It's a bit uh, a bit more easy going these days, yeah. thank God, you know. Um, and so you know, because obviously you've you, you, you've you've written books now um, as well, uh, fiction. And is that like when when did that? start for you and and was that something that kind of naturally came out of the like a combination of the 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 journalism and the songwriting or how did how did you get into that side of things oh uh, i've always wanted to write books and i've always written i've written mm. i've written about five or six but yeah but um no none well one one published years ago but uh i've written several that i haven't finished mm. this one that, that i've just done at the moment i've just self-published yeah it's called danger moon it's, it's a cosmic gothic thriller mm. it's very long so mm -hmm. i'm publishing it book by book so i just published right. one book in australia 
but um, the whole thing's done. The whole thing's done, but I'm still editing. I'm still yeah, 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 working yeah. away, polishing it up. So that, that keeps me occupied a lot of time. That's great. I really enjoy that. Mm. So how many how many books is it going to be? Four. Right? Yeah. Just like Twilight. And they're all quite long. Is it? Like I don't Twilight? know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it'll, it'll, be, going for. it'll be five or six movies, though. They'll, they'll yeah, really oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Especially by the last one. They yeah. make like three out of the last <laughs> one once they see the, them doors coming in. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Is that something... I mean, I, I have no idea how the whole process works, but obviously there's the whole kind of optioning thing with regard to, you know, film. And, and obviously, you know, you, you do have... Um, you know, through through working in, in, in journalism, you've worked on documentaries and, and things like that. Is that something you've ever thought about, like, uh, you know, adaptations, film adaptations and things like that? Oh, you know, you, when you're writing, you kind of, you, you do have a, a kind of a part of you is, is you know... Visualising. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. But I've never gone into the, you know, the... Actively kind of... Thing. ...side of it, no. I haven't yeah. really thought about it too much because I've just been too preoccupied with music and... Yeah, yeah. ...or writing the book itself, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so the one's, one's out now, when's the, the next one out? I'd say I'll, I'll probably have that ready to go when I get home, which is cool. at the end of August. I'll probably uh, press go on that. The, the modern publishing world, the self-publishing world, is qu- quite easy. You know, yeah. you can so that you can get um, you go through just go through a process, and you've got the digital book. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's available, you know, all over the place. It's called Da Angel Moon by Mick Daly. Anyone? Da Angel Moon by um, Mick Daly. But. Um, the, the, and, and it's, it's supposed to be print to order, so you're supposed yes. to be able to pr- order it, and mm. and you will get yep. a printed copy delivered to your door. But when I <laughs> pressed all go and everything, and that's their whole business model. Uh, but when it was all sort of out, I'm, I'm waiting to be given a, a link to give yeah. to my adoring public. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ha- this is how you order the thing, the 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 print to order thing. No link. Right. So I'm messaging them uh, and I'm emailing them, going, "Where's the link? How are they going?" Uh, I'm talking to a woman in the States and she's and her only answer is I don't know <laughs> I'm saying what do you mean you don't know this is your whole business model oh, God. And, and and she kind of yeah I didn't really get an answer but I kind of got a semi answer in that oh I'm sure it'll come to light soon <laughs> well, I haven't seen that yet anyway but anyway anyway so, it's available digitally and uh, yeah, print on demand and, and, well, well I've been able to order but the funny thing is I've been able to order author only copies yeah right? yeah and then that must be very satisfying. It's great to, to, oh, to, to hold a tangible hand. kind of thing. Yeah, it's great. The new book smell, and it's actually your yeah. Yeah, smell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I do really love the book. I, I really love it. Yeah. And, well, yeah. well, give us a okay. So I'm a prospective um, book enthusiast. What's the uh, without you know going too hard on the spoilers or anything like that? Yeah, give yeah. us a give us a little. This is uh, the hard part because I get asked this a lot. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. a very complex plot. Okay. Uh, essentially, who did it? No. <laughs> essentially, it's a good versus evil, evil struggle. Yeah. Starts out like a kind of a historical novel. So when's it set? In in the Eastern Europe in the 1800s. Okay. Right. The mid to late 1800s, and uh, starts out like a yeah, kind of almost like a. Uh, I don't know if you heard of Flashman, Colonel Harry Paget Flashman. Maybe. Uh, sort of this yeah. kind of, you know, he's a soldier in the in the British Army in the 1800s. Fought it. He was at Sebastopol, the charge of the Light Brigade. Right, okay. Blah blah. Kind of like, certainly inspired by him mm. and by Sherlock Holmes, that kind of thing. And then, that's yeah, book one. Uh, kind of at the cutoff point is where it's just starting to go a bit cosmic. Right. Okay. Anyway, in book two, it goes. Like that, yeah, 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 <laughs> into yeah, the yeah. cosmic realm. And it's so a, there's a there's a for want of a better word there's a there's a supernatural element at play here. Yeah, cool. yeah, uh, definitely, and uh, a very uh, yeah, it's it's a tough one. But I, I like to leave it in the air anyway because and when you say thriller, yeah. uh, I suppose like so so what is what is this guy is he a detective or is he a or is like, I can't give too much oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> he's certainly a uh, he's a soldier he's a retired soldier okay, okay, but okay. that's not all he is okay okay and oh. so the, it, when I say thriller you know it's a there's, a, there's, a mystery, there's mystery there's mystery there's mystery but yeah. there's also lots of cliffhangers yeah, and cool. it just kind of gets weirder and weirder and weirder and there's a lot of there's a lot going on but hopefully in to my opinion anyway by the, by the time you get to book four, all these, and there's a lot of them, all these threads yeah, kind of yeah, come together. Nice, nice. Mm. And But you're left guessing for a lot of it, and I think that's the point of a novel, is to keep yeah. people... Oh, of course. They don't want to be satisfied, they want to be hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. That's, I mean, that's what keeps you reading something, yeah. is, is not knowing what's coming next. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we found out, you know, because we wrote about one and a half books <laughs> of this uh, sci-fi trilogy that we've... Yeah. 
developed like back man years ago now yeah um and yeah it's just the the world building and everything you get so absorbed into that world yeah. for that period yeah that it's just like you're you're almost living there it's so exciting oh, yeah. it's yeah. so exciting and, and, and you that, care about it yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. no it was fun. it was it was it was really phenomenal actually when because we were writing it kind of together and yeah. mm-hmm. you know every single day every single walk were just conversations you know um, around characters and plots and this yeah. and that and then going home and yeah, writing it and all that kind of yeah. stuff it is it's an extremely exciting kind of process and it's I, I just think it's such a phenomenally like liberating because you know we, we we're in the in the music world and you know there's this whole kind of um, you know conversation around the proliferation of of access to technology and and, and and recording and studios and all that kind of stuff and, yeah. and there's a, there's also a, this this kind of fear around um, yeah well if everyone can do it then uh, they'll saturate has, the market and yeah. there's no this well, and all that stuff, stuff really. and but the, the the reality the thing I always tell people is like you know a pen and a piece of paper you can go to to Tesco and and spend three dollars on a pen and a piece of paper yeah and it, you know. You, you immediately have access to what incredible creativity. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's, and that's yeah. when, when the, whenever the excuse comes up about, oh, yeah. I can't do this, I can't do this. It's like, it's like, you know, writing is just this incredible, um, uh, incredibly... Yeah, and again, it doesn't mean you're going to be fucking great at it, but it means that yeah. it's, it's this... Um, it's well, you have the most d- dem- democratised kind of art form really yeah. you know and the AI world is, is kind of people see that as a threat mm. and, and in some ways it, they're, they're probably right but in other ways I see it as, as a great opportunity because like it's already encroaching upon the art world Yeah, and it's kind of like as David was saying mm. um, you know it's kind of like uh, if you're just going to give up then yeah. you weren't an artist anyway yeah correct you, know, yeah. you, you just keep going and, and, yeah. and, and if you feel threatened by it then you do better Yep, yep. Yeah, better. And, yeah. and that's the way I feel about the writing thing. It's not quite, AI is not there yet, but I'm sure it will get there. Yeah. But I'm always reminded of um, Fritz Leiber wrote a book in the 70s, the, the science fiction writer called The Silver Eggheads, mm-hmm. about a machine that churns out books. Right, well, here it is. And, yeah. and here it is. Yeah. And, and so to me, I wanted to, uh, so when I heard about AI and how fast it was growing, you know, this is years back now, and that only spurred me on. It was like, yeah. I've got to get this out before AI writes something better, <laughs> yeah. you know? And so yeah. like, to me, it's like it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an opportunity to, to do better and, and to spur yourself mm-hmm. on and to yeah. be better than the robot. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, exactly. no, you're exactly right. And if you look back through history, there's, there was been, there's been do- hundreds of these, of these giving up points. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know, whether yeah. it's the whether it's the printing press or you know the the electric guitar. Yeah. You know, everyone going, oh well, now you know. It's yeah. like, well, you know, uh, you know, art or the or the process, the human experience is that of development. Yeah. So things never ever stay static. Yeah. You know, for any any given period of time, That's the only right. only the only constant is change. You know, yeah. and so. You know, unless you, if you're not going to get into that spirit of 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 the of what of the the concept of change, you're not into the spirit of of existence. Exactly, yeah. change is the only constant. Yeah, and everything changes all the time, and you have to yeah. be with it. And art is the is the focal point. And, and actually, yeah. Danger Moon is about it's about lots of things, but mm. it's about art. It's yeah. about the importance of art and how that's the. It's kind of about religion as well, mm. but it's about how art is the only enduring constant for, yeah, for yeah. humans because art is a thing that gives us that that liberating force that allows us to transcend ourselves and become yeah. a, a, a vibrant, fun, functional part of the universe. Mm. Yeah, yeah, totally. And it's and it's it's like the reason why all the you know the ancient Irish kings had to also be poets. Yeah, you know because you know they had to. They had to have an understanding of that, um, you know, not just the not just the, the fundamental kind of building blocks of society, but the actual once you've once you've secured, you know, the the you know the the, the, the means to make your your existence basically comfortable. Yeah. After that, then it's yeah. Well, what do we do now? You know, yeah. the, we we appreciate and we. Um, we explore the nature of existence and, and the art forms, the arts are that expression of that, you know? Yeah, it's not only it's not only an expression of our place in the world, mm. but, it's an, but it's an insight 
into the other world, yeah, the yeah. quantum world, the spirit world. Yeah. It's, a, it's a way to understand how that works as mm-hmm. well. Inward which and outward. Us, which is, you know, because because we're just as much a part of that as we are of this. Yep. So if, you, if you've got a grounding in both worlds, then at least you've mm. got a chance of something, survival. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's exactly. like, it's like, you know, whether it's with the with the chakras or whatever, you know, you've got it, you're supposed to have them, you know, you know, balanced and aligned. And, and, and yeah. if you're too, if you're too, if too much of your energy is around the, you know, the, the lower chakras, you'll be very, you might be very grounded, but you won't be very, um, uh, op- open to the those those more interesting elements, and no. then if you're too up here, yeah. you know you're just sitting in a room just yeah. Yeah. listening out. And the best kind of art, you don't want too many tops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. But the best kind of art is what brings that stuff together, yeah. where it's yeah, like so. it's transcendental in some ways, but it's also kind of grounded right. and yeah, you know, because there is art that's just completely out yeah. there, and there's nothing yeah. to grab onto. Yeah. And then there's art that's pure function and. Yeah has nothing that really like takes you away so when you can get yeah. that balance well especially yeah with music like because yeah, the thing. Well, and same same with your stuff as well i think you i think you tread the balance really well because you you fulfill the great kind of um visceral um uh physical needs which are you know great rhythm yeah. and and you know um Beat and rhythm, and so that you know, even if someone has no idea or isn't even listening to what you're going on about, they'll they'll enjoy it on that level. Yeah. Um, and then you you know you're capturing that that nice middle part, the emotional part that the kind of chord progressions and 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 melody takes care of. Um, you know, because one thing you know, playing a few of your songs recently, you know, it's you, you might take chords that are the, the same chords we're all using, you know, but the way you change them and stuff like that is really exciting and mm-hmm. and keeps you really engaged. And then you know, the icing on the cake is you've got you've got these great kind of narratives and stories weaved into the songs so that they can be appreciated. I mean, they can be appreciated without the music at all. They just make a, a nice piece yeah. of work on their own. So, so you know, getting that 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 balance. Uh, you know, if you think of like like dance music on on one side, where you know there's about four lyrics in the whole song, and they're about going out on a Friday night or something, and it's all body, it's all visceral, yeah, yeah. it's all grounded. Mm. Um, you know, and then like Alex is saying there, you might have some really like hyper progressive psychedelic, yeah. you know, kind of ambient thing that yeah, yeah. is all very um, spiritual, intellectual kind of thing. You know, and they they all have their place, obviously, but yeah. it's it is really nice. I think the best artists. Certainly, I, I like to listen to manage to, um, you know, uh, play really well with that balance. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's what you seek for. In, you know, that's what you always seek for when you're writing a song or when you're writing anything, really. Yeah. And yeah, obviously it's hit and miss, but hopefully that's what you that's what you're aiming for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, give us a crazy story about gigging in Australia. <laughs> crazy story. I'm kidding. Great story about gigging in Ireland. Okay, go on. Because it happened just the other day. Oh, the lightning? The lightning. Oh, yeah, go on, tell us. Yeah. So I was in Rahan, the, the thatched bar in Rahan, which is in County Offaly, and um, great country pub. And a lot of the characters in there remind me of where I grew up in Albury, mm-hmm. um, you know, country people. And um, uh, there, was, there was a heavy weather coming in. Um, it was predicted that there would be storms. And as I was setting up, there was indeed storms, mm-hmm, great mm-hmm. crashing thunderstorms, lightning. And we really haven't had lightning. these. I, I, I'm blaming you for all this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, all the locals are saying, and I was speaking to one woman in particular who's saying she's lived there all her life. Yeah. Never seen anything like it. No, no, no. Never heard anything like it, never seen anything like it. And at one point, there was a great crack of lightning and thunder directly overhead, hit the, hit the pub, yeah. blew plugs out of the walls, blew the roof off a house down the road. Put another one on fire. A young bloke out the back was touching something steel. He got put to, put in hospital. Sake. Um, one guy, I was sort of standing there setting up, not just listening, going, "Wow!" And this guy comes up to me and says, "Unplug your guitar." Oh, oh, going, oh yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, yeah, then it just poured down, and um, you would have had that Back to the Future moment where yeah, it yeah, blows yeah. out, you know. <laughs> yeah. And. and uh, <clears throat> yeah, the ladies were saying they'd never seen anything like it. And I, wa- I waited for a while, and every- everyone was very kind of like a bit, but having a great time. Yeah. And then, the- then it went it was a blackout, so I had to play acoustically in the dark, yeah, yeah, yeah. which was great because everyone was getting into it and crashing on the tables, and it was a real moment. What a night! Uh, what yeah. a night! Isn't that fantastic? You know, just a bizarre <clears throat> little thing, and it's it is cool, and it's 
you know, it's a testament to the thing of, of you know, your experience as well, you know, the fact that it's like, you know, the show must go on. Yeah. And yeah, in yeah. fact, it's a night that they'll all remember because of that. Exactly. Yeah. Poor fella in the hospital probably doesn't want to remember it, but uh, no. he'll be all right. I don't think it was too bad. But, you, know, <laughs> okay. you just got thrown across the room, kind of did it. Yeah, and they yeah. wanted me to play the Offaly Rover. Yeah. And uh, that was like, I couldn't help him out there, but I did play some. Have you looked it up since? I have. Yeah, I have. yeah. Is it a good song? Good. Yeah, it's a good song. Okay. I'll, I'll do that. And I'm doing like Raglan Road and She Raglan. Moves oh, Through yeah. the Fair. Yeah. And, uh, hey, you, do you ever do um, Follow Me Up to Carlo? No, no. That's oh, good. That's a good Follow one. Me Up to Carlo is brilliant. Okay. And also um, Rocky Road to Dublin. Yeah, I know that one. That's a beauty. You That's did that a the other beauty. Day, yeah, because yeah. it's um, uh, lyrically fantastic, but also yeah. I think it's in what it's just in it's in one basic basically. Or something. Yeah, right. everything's just a one beat. Da, 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 yeah, right. All the changes are really weird. You know, okay. it's, it's quite cool. So okay, I'll check that out. Yeah, uh, my recommendation would be follow me up to Carlo Planksty, which is great, and it's a great um, it's a great old school rebel song. Yeah, yeah. Lord killed yeah. air and cutting his head off and all this stuff. You know, it's okay. great. Yeah, that's one to check out. Um, but yeah, listen, we're, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up soon. Um, yeah. But also before we do, um, I, this probably won't um, air for you know maybe even a, a week or two. I don't know yeah. what I'm about. But what I'm trying to say is, um, what's the best way for people maybe like to, to to keep an eye on your on your gigs and things like that for the rest of the tour. MickDaily.com. Daily.com. You, you update them there, do you? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I said it. Say your name. <laughs> yeah, MickDaily.com, M-I-C-K-D-A-L-E-Y. Um, and the gigs are all there. And I'm, I'm trying to keep a journal of, of the whole thing, but there's photos. And that's all. That's where it, you can get links from there to all my journalism and all the music. And, and the books. And the, book. and the books, the Angel Moon link is yeah, there. Yeah, great. And um, the other thing I was going to say is that you've, you've started getting on top of your uh, Instagram as well. Yes. Bit, that's looking a bit busier these yeah, days, yeah, which yeah. is great. I'm uh, not great at social media, but I'm trying to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every now and then you take pictures, stick it up. It's great. Yeah. Um, well, listen, Mick, absolute pleasure. Thanks so yeah, much for coming on. Man. And uh, yeah. everybody, get online and check out uh, Mick Daly's stuff. And we uh, enjoy the second song. They will have heard one at the start. And here's the second one. Take it easy. People go to the pub to play pool or watch footy on the telly while they drink rum and coke. Some just want to sit and talk shit all night. Others go out the back and smoke dope. Me, I follow the blossoms wherever they bloom. Outside in the paddocks where I want to be. Wherever the sun is shining and the wind is blowing, that's where you'll find me. Well, I've been bringing the honey home Yeah, I've been bringing the honey home Yeah, times are tough out in the bush Fuel's at an all-time high Honey prices at an all-time low But it's always been hard We were brought up in an old bush shack Without electricity or hot water Had to ride our pushies for two days To go to a dance in town have a hit of tennis or a game of footy We did alright We had milk off the cows to drink and we made our own fun Used to go out trapping rabbits when we needed meat Mum looked after us She used to bake us cakes every Sunday Scones, biscuits and bread to see us through the week She was bringing the honey home Yeah, she was bringing the honey home. Well, she was bringing the honey home. Yeah, she was bringing the honey home. I gotta bring it on, bro. Come on.
Mothers left school at 15 to join Dad on the bees Following the blossoms, following the rain He taught us butchering He said we needed a trade to fall back on But his first love was bees Dad showed us all that Mallee country From Bawarana to Burke Nimiji to Cobar Tottenham to Mount Hope Where the rivers run and why What makes up a blue sky I miss the old bugger Cause he was bringing the honey home Yeah, he was bringing the honey home Well, he was bringing the honey home Yeah, he was bringing the honey home That's right, bring it home, home. My brothers are all headed back to Cobar. My mate Wall said he'd get out when fuel hit a buck twenty a litre. Me, I'm still in there. It's all an oversized butchering. And I love bees. I love honey. I got a broken hand the minute, but it won't stop me. I'm bringing. 